Today in Matt's class, we are gonna talk tips, tricks, and techniques for drawing the human body at different angles. So in previous videos, we've talked about anatomy and we've talked about drawing the female character and the male character. But in addition to just drawing a person standing like this, you need to be able to draw people at different angles, sitting down, you know, turning like this, looking up in the air. And you need to draw, even if it is just someone standing like this, is the camera looking at this person directly? Or is the camera over on the side? Or is the camera lower looking up? Or is the camera higher looking down, right? So you need to be able to draw your figures at different angles. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that today. So for example, let's say we have Spider-Man off the top of my head. Let's say we have Spider-Man sitting at the kitchen table and Aunt May is going to cook him a delicious dinner. I know that sounds weird. Like if you're only a fan of the Marvel MCU, why would Aunt May be cooking a meal for Spider-Man? But when I was a kid growing up reading the actual comics, true story, even though Peter Parker obviously is Aunt May's nephew, Aunt May was always cooking up delicious dinners for Spidey. True story. So let's say we've got Spider-Man sitting at the kitchen table. So you could have something where here is Spider-Man sitting here. So here's Spider-Man sitting at the table, but that's so weird. Like if it's just from a side view like that, like why is it so perfectly from the side and he's sitting waiting for dinner? It's just a little too perfect. So a lot of times when you're drawing your figures, you want to use two point perspective or you want to just have things at a slight angle. You, even though you are completely controlling everything that you draw, you want to make it look like it's not so forced fed. And unless it's something that is really dramatic and you want it to be like perfect one point perspective or a perfect profile, that's cool sometimes if it's something really important. But if it's just a casual scene, you want your camera angle to be casual, usually something more like a three quarter view. So if I were to draw Spider-Man waiting at the dinner table, here is how I might approach it. So first I would start with lightly, so this is my orange for drawing lightly. I'm gonna start with my stick and let's say we've got, here's our head here. And here is Spider-Man, here's his shoulders, here's his rib cage. Spider-Man is strong, but he's kind of lanky. He's more lean than anything else. Here, here, and here is the pelvic bone. Here is his legs sitting under the table. So I might have something like this. Here is my stick figure. Next up, I'm going to lightly draw in the muscles. This is the stage I usually call the meat. So there's our basic meat, and now is where we are going to begin drawing the details. This is the fun part that usually you guys start with, but if you can kind of get your basic blueprint of the figure in first, it's gonna be a lot better to put in the details now. So I usually like to start from the top and kind of work my way down. Now for drawing Spider-Man's mask, it's actually really easy to do and a lot of fun. So first I'm gonna draw the over, overall shape of the head, here's the brow coming in. The cheekbone comes out just a little bit. So there's kind of our overall head shape there. Then all you have to do where Spider-Man's eyes are, you kind of just put in these crazy triangles. Now I'm a fan of like the Todd McFarlane old school Spider-Man where his eyes were almost like manga eyes, just the bigger triangles a little bit. That. Then once you have the eye shapes you like, you want to go a little bit thicker. 
around like so. Then the idea for Spider-Man, maybe I got those a little bit lower. I can fix that. I think I just have his head a little too high is what it is. That looks a little better. Then the idea for Spider-Man, what you want to do, you want to make the spider web that goes over his whole head in between his eyes. You just kind of make this little starburst. And then all you have to do first, you draw these lines that kind of spiral around his head like so and then here's the back here and the shoulder the deltoid Um, then the mask, the way the mask was always drawn in the comics, it never really made sense. And so they had to kind of adjust it a little bit for the movies. But these would kind of spiral, spiral around the head here. And then it always kind of just magically went around the neck here, even though that doesn't like totally make sense. What you do, you've got this starburst here, and then you kind of just draw in the spider web, doing a loop de loo around like so. And then the neck. It's a little bit tighter around the neck, the idea being that it's kind of this elastic fabric that just kind of works its way around. So I was always very interested, I'm still very interested every time they have a new Spider-Man movie or suit or even video game, it's always, it never makes sense how the jaw wraps around and then somehow magically goes into this shape here. I think it was just kind of maybe somewhat of a lazy design like when they kind of came up with spider-man that in the comics it kind of it kind of works even though it doesn't really make a lot of sense so i'm always curious in when they make the movies how do they address this how do they kind of fix that whole jawline okay so we've got the rest of the body here we already have our blueprint underneath so we kind of know how this is going to work
All right, something kind of sort of. So here's kind of why I wanted to kind of put this out there. So I've got everything kind of on an angle. And you're figuring it out slowly. You want to challenge yourself. This is where you add in the details, but there's one more step that you want to do to kind of bring your different angles to life. And the last step is shadows. And I want to show you why shadows are super important. Right now we've got this plate on the table, but is it on the table? It almost looks like this circle. It could just be a print draw. That could be like a flat table mat. It's kind of hard to tell, but if you do something very simple like this, if you add in just a little bit, of a drop shadow, suddenly the lip of this plate, it still looks like the plate is lifting off the table. Or I'm sorry, it looks like the plate is sitting on the table, but now it looks like the lip around the plate is lifting off of it. That makes it easier to pick up. And it just adds a little bit more three-dimensionality to it. We can put Spidey likes his, his vitamin D. So maybe there's like a glass of milk or something like that. It's just... um, but there, but here's the next thing. So Spider-Man is sitting down here. Are his hands on the table or is he actually lifting his hands and like meditating home oh, just a couple inches above the table? Looking at this, we kind of don't know. Is he touching the table or not? I have no idea. But watch what happens when I put in some specific shadows. What if I have a shadow going like this? And what if even under this hand here, what if there's a little shadow like this? What if there's a little shadow under there? What if there's a little shadow under there? And then here, same thing. What if we've got this going on here? All right, so now unmistakably these hands, his arms are raising a little bit, but his fingertips are definitely on the table and you can totally see that based on the shadows. So when you're visualizing these characters, all the same rules apply that we went into when we learned how to draw the figure straightforward like this. Um, but you really need to challenge yourself and start turning objects so that what a hand looks like like this, start visualizing as the arm turns. What does the head look like this way and this way? And I've got some really cool videos that are either out now or coming out soon. I think they're out already where you're gonna see drawing the head at different angles. So you really wanna put that into effect and you wanna kinda of get out of the habit of just drawing your figures completely forward or your figures completely sideways. Start drawing your characters at different angles. Your visual storytelling will be that much better for it. Capiche? All right, put it to the test.